imagine a robot. I'm guessing, after decades of droids and terminators, that the machine you're picturing is something metal, rigid, and human-shaped. But this type of robot can only do so much. What we need are soft skin robots, and this is exactly what a team of Harvard researchers have built, an autonomous 3D printed octopus shaped soft robot nicknamed Octabar. I spoke with Michael Venner about their latest invention. The concept of the paper was to uh, come up with a design and fabrication technique that we hope can inspire a whole new generation, a whole new direction in soft robots. And we've supplied this robot, the Octobot, as a demonstration that it is a possibility. It's a robot that looks like an octopus. So uh, does it also feel as slimy and soft as an octopus? <laughs> well, it doesn't have any electronic components. So you can put it in water, and then uh, then I guess it becomes a little bit slimy. It feels like a piece of rubber, like a rubber band or a child's toy. Okay, and how big is it? Like, can it fit into both of my hands? Absolutely. It's uh, about six and a half centimeters across, uh, about a millimeter and a half to two millimeters tall, and it weighs six grams or seven grams once it's loaded with fuel. And uh, what's the advantage of having a robot so soft? So uh, soft robots really benefit in uh, delicate environments such as human robot interactions or manipulating delicate items such as harvesting or interacting with animals. Their robot is the first autonomous machine to be made with all soft robotics, without any hard and rigid parts like batteries. But if it doesn't have any batteries, how does it work then? Yeah, so we use a liquid fuel called a monopropellant, which is in this case is hydrogen peroxide, it comes in a liquid. It's then create oxygen gas. Exactly. When it, when it uh, is in the presence of, of a catalyst, it becomes... Uh, water and oxygen gas. So the liquid fuel is injected upstream into a fuel tank, which expands like a balloon. So it has a little bit of pressure. This pressure forces the fuel through a soft controller, which selectively delivers fuel downstream. Once the fuel passes through a soft controller, a uh, small area we, are calling, we call a reaction chamber has a small amount of platinum inside of it, which causes decomposition of the fuel. So the fuel turns from a small amount of liquid into a large amount of gas. And then that hot pressurized gas is used to deflect the, the legs. All right. So if it doesn't need any batteries, how much time can it work like that then? The liquid fuel supplies uh, fuel to the reaction chamber for about 10 minutes. And with a robot being limited to this working time of 10 minutes, what can it do within this time then? Move its legs selectively up and down. In this incarnation, it doesn't sw doesn't move forward or swim. Okay, let's see. Can this time also be improved somehow? Yeah, we're envisioning future soft controller work that could uh, limit the fuel input and the exhaust rate and could hold uh, steady positions for time, maybe sense the environment and react to events that happen around the robot. What can a robot do that a human can't? Well, robots are suited for a different type of task than a human being. One of the best parts about a robot is they're essentially disposable. If a human goes into a search and rescue field and falls down a cliff or uh, uh, is hit by a bomb, uh, steps on a bomb, that's a tragedy. If a $2 robot does that, nobody really cares. One could envision a scenario down the road, of course, after substantial advancements have been made, where there's a search and recovery operation and a rescue team wants to just investigate the field, figure out where they need to go and where it's dangerous. Because these robots cost 2 to $3 each, they just throw 100 robots out there, uh, anticipating that 80 of them are destroyed. And of course, that's something you would never want to do with humans. Mm -hmm. So in the future, do you think that uh, are we going to have soft robots wandering around? Yeah, I think soft robots are providing a really exciting opportunity for us to incorporate robots in the, the workplace. When I look around me, I work in a robotics lab and we don't ha and we're probably one of the most robot friendly places in the world and yet we don't have any robots working with us one of the biggest barriers to entry has been the safety issue when you look in a car manufacturing facility they have all of these robots doing wonderful tasks but then there's a bright yellow line painted on the floor saying robot area keep out with soft robots i think that really opens the door to more friendly interaction
That was Dr. Michael Vanner from Harvard University, whose study came out this week in the journal Nature. And I'm Luchka Bibic from The Naked Scientist.